Well, hello again everybody, and we're back on the Hewlett Packard H335A. It's a universal frequency counter, or a universal counter anyway. Um, I don't even remember where we left it last time. We identified that we had some, well, mainly one bad tantalum capacitor. Well, that's still cut out of circuit. Um, uh, it needs replacing at some point, but I haven't got a, a suitable equivalent, so uh, I've left that out of circuit for now. But what I have replaced is, I've replaced the, um, the minus 15 volt regulator and also, I don't know if it's on this diagram here, uh, where's that gone? So we've replaced the, uh, the minus 15 volt regulator and we've also replaced this NPN uh, pass transistor that's here that supplies the plus 5 volts. Um, at the same time, I think you saw last time I was running the equipment, I did manage to get some life into it by running it from a lab power supply. So I've replaced uh, those two components and I guess um, I've done all the checks I can so it's just a matter of now on uh, I guess just switching it on and uh, hoping for the best. Um, I don't think we'll get any shorts on the supply rails now so um, yeah, I'm not expecting a problem with that anyway, so it's more just a matter of, um, <laughs> will it work? I think it's a little bit strange that when you power this up without turning it on, you get a little red power indicator lamp. And um, I thought that was a little bit strange, but just doing a little bit of reading through the manual, the reason I think that it lights up like that is because if you've got the oven controlled oscillator installed, which is an add-on, it's an option, it's a option, um, it needs to be supplied with power all the time to keep the oven controlled oscillator hot. Um, but I haven't got that type of oscillator, but I guess it's just indicating that it's, uh, it's got power on when it's, in, uh, when it's in standby. Right, okay, enough waffle, big reveal. Is it going to switch on? Is it not going to switch on? Is it going to switch on and explode? Um, I don't know, a bit, a bit cautious. Shall we go for it? Here we go, one, two, three. Oh, lights up. Ah. Okay, well it's not doing very much, but it's not showing uh, a fault code on it. I think it was showing um, a fault code before. There is a, a test button on it. Uh, I think, you, is it check? Okay, I think you've got to hold it down to put it into a full check mode. All right. Okay, so that came up error error 70, that's warning me of at the moment, but that's actually a good sign. I know what error 70 is because again, uh, just for a change, I've actually bothered to read the manual. It's complaining at the moment because um, when you do a self-check, it's expecting to see its own crystal oscillator. So we're just going to install a loopback connector from the back of the machine to the front. So uh, let's try that. Okay, so we're feeding back the uh, the oscillator into the front of the uh, counter now. So hopefully, when we uh, press the self test, it should pass. Here we go. There we go. Fe pass. So that will do me. Good enough. Okay. Next step. Um, I guess we've just switched it on, so we could do with just checking them supply voltage first, make sure that they are at least something sensible, because some of these devices, uh, let's just have another look at the drawing. Uh, I thought that this pass transistor had some adjustment on it. Actually, no, that one isn't adjustable, but the 3 volt has got adjustment on it, and the, uh, the plus 15 volt rail has got adjustment on it. So I guess it would be sensible just to check them, so let's do that first. 5 volt rail, 5.04, so that's good enough. Uh, minus 15 volt rail, minus 14.94, that's good enough as well. Uh, where's the plus 15 volt rail, is that it? Bang on 15 volts, uh, minus 3. You know what? I've got absolutely no idea where the minus 3 volt rail is. So, oh, maybe it's there. Okay, so the 3 volt rail is a little bit out of spec, I think. Maybe we can improve on that. 
Okay, that's good enough. This pass transistor on the back of here does get, um, well, it's fair to say, it does get toasty hot, that thing. I guess I always worry about things getting hot, but I can keep my finger on it, so it's below 50 degrees, so that's probably normal. When I was running this board off the um, off the power supply, off the lab power supply, the, the 5 volt logic was drawing about 2 amps, I think. I should probably check that on the service data. But I couldn't find any components overheating, although I did think 2 amps was uh, quite a, an hefty amount of current to be drawing from a logic package. Sorry, to be, to be drawing for uh, the logic. But some of these uh, ICs on here, when you actually touch them, they do seem to run surprisingly hot. So I don't know if that's just a characteristic of some of the logic families that's employed here or not. I'm, I'm not expert enough to comment. But um, yeah, the whole piece of equipment does run quite warm. I'm guessing as well that probably I'd be better off running it with the uh, the lid on because I'm just feeling the way that this fan works and uh, yeah it's obviously designed to draw to draw air through it's not blowing in it's sucking out so at the moment it's only sucking warm air from here so I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll put the lid back on because it might actually be running hotter because I've got the lid off I guess one thing we do need to do is we need to uh, connect a, a signal generator to it and, uh, well, see if it counts. Well, for the purpose of that test, I'm actually going to use this little module up here, and this is a, a GPS disciplined oscillator. So, again, I'm not, I can't exactly tell you everything about how this works, but basically what there is in here, there's, a, there's an oven-controlled oscillator, and uh, it's got this word here, disciplined. So what we have is we've got a, a little antenna on the roof of the house and that's, um, that's getting signals from satellites and what it's actually doing is uh, it's tweaking the frequency of the other controlled crystal oscillator inside this box. So in theory this should be, uh, this should be outputting um, a very accurate uh, time standard, a very accurate 10 megahertz um, frequency standard. I'm not exactly sure how good it is. I know it isn't as good as, for example, a rubidium standard, but again, it's uh, it's still an order of magnitude better than what I really need for all the stuff I play with. So uh, I know um, it was Jack Vedge who was on the vintage is it the vintage electronics channel. Um, Jack was asking me about at one point about what I use as a a frequency standard and yeah so Jack this is this is what I use and quite often I actually run all my test gear that's on the you can see I've got all this test gear here um, well I was going to say that I run all my test gear off that stand but it's not off, not actually true uh, mainly what I use in the uh, in my little lab here as I've got you can see I've got this uh, Marconi uh, spectrum analyzer and this Marconi unit has got a very accurate oven controlled oscillator in it and what I find is that um, if you use the, the GPS one is you've got to wait for it, the oscillator to warm up and you've also got to wait for it to lock with satellites and that can take quite a while whereas I find that this thing uh, I can switch it on and 20 minutes later it has reached temperature and whenever I check it against the uh, GPS oscillator whenever I check it against uh, the little box there they always appear to be absolutely bang on so uh, yeah, I quite often use that Marconi unit. Anyway, I'm not going to use it today. Uh, I'm going to. This is the uh, just a lead that we've got coming from it. Let's plug this into the uh, universal counter, and hopefully, we're going to get something like 10 megs. Well, that seems pretty good, doesn't it? I don't think I'm going to uh, complain too much. So, what's that? Is that four hertz out? I always get me uh, numbers wrong. Is it? Four? I always get. Is it four or forty? I think it's four, isn't it? I'm just wondering if I should just aimlessly press some buttons on it to see if anything else operates. Well, it looks like we can speed up and slow down the gate function here. So uh, if you want it to count very rapidly, we can turn the gate right down there and the, uh, the gate symbol's flashing quickly. So that's just the sampling gate that we're adjusting. I guess if you want a really accurate sample, you, uh, you slow the gate down. 
So I'm guessing with this very long gate period, the decimals have all shifted along. So is that millihertz? I'm guessing that's millihertz. Uh, so that was input. Uh, that was input one we've tried there. Input A. Now, strangely, I've read the manual on on this device, and uh, to actually show input B, you've actually got to go into one of the special function menus. And uh, <laughs> I have to admit, I can't remember how to do it. You've got to select a special function. But I think that's really bizarre. You would think that you've got controls for A on the front panel there, frequency A. But you'd think you would have a button on the front panel to say frequency B, but you don't. I think that's really strange. But you do have one for frequency C, which is here. So let's try frequency C. And we've got to select that. And that's not doing anything at the moment, so have I got something set wrong? Okay, well we don't seem to be getting anything on input C, and uh, yeah, I've had to twiddle around, and then uh, yeah, I realised my bleeding obvious mistake. Uh, it looks like input C needs to be between 150 megahertz and 1.3 gigs. Um, well, I have got some RF signal generators, but I can't be bothered plugging them out, so plugging them in. So let's just do a quick and dirty test. So this is. Uh, this is a little handheld radio ham thing, and at the moment I've got it set up on one of the, uh, the PMR channels. I don't exactly know what frequency it's going to come out. Something in the 400 megs band, so let's try that. 446.8165. So yeah, it looks like uh, input C is working as well. I love that. Well, seeing as we've got this little handheld radio um, out, we might as well try putting some other signals into it. So let's try something on the... Uh, on the, on the um, 2 meter band, uh, won't use S20. Two, two, three, two, Let's four. try uh, S23, which should be uh, 575 megahertz, is that, if all is correct. Uh, this is Mike Zero Kilo Lima Fox. Mike Zero Kilo Lima Fox, is this frequency in use, please? Okay, nothing heard. This is a radio test. Mike Zero Kilo Lima Fox. Mike Zero Kilo Lima Fox. Yep, 575, so that'll do. So much like a blue Peter tortoise, we're going to put this away in a little box of hay for, um, actually for the summer, and we will get this out again in the autumn, and maybe do a few more checks on it, and uh, replace some of those evil tantalum capacitors. But uh, until next time, I think that'll do. Thanks very much for watching, bye bye for now. Yeah. Yes, my little darling, I thought they'd never go either. Oh, lots of red LEDs. You sexy minx, you. You little naughty thing. Mm.